you. What are you doing up there? I'm coming to get you. Ugh. If you're not down with the long-term narrative of Assassin's Creed at this point, there's really no reason to jump in. And even if you are, Desmond Miles is the most vanilla bland character in the history of video games. I mean, in order to give him character development in the last game, they gave him a father and they gave him daddy issues and he's just a nag and I, there's no... You know, you've got Connor and his dad in the main story, and then you've got Desmond and his dad, and it just goes nowhere, and there's no, like, emotional investment possible. I care more about Sean than I do about Desmond, and Sean's like the tech guy, okay? Uh, all the fun to be had is in the animus, in the history. You know, you play a half-Native American warrior who runs around with an axe chopping up motherfuckers, you get to kill historical characters from America's early history with things like, oh, they have like a rope with a hook on it, so you could be like, get over here, like some badass scorpion motherfucker, and just boom. You know, it used to be that you, you had to be kind of sneaky to be an assassin. You had to blend in amongst the monks, and you had to move amongst the shadows, and, and listen for whispers of a conversation, and, and no one knew who you were because you were, you were that blended into society. But when they did see you act out of the ordinary, they would call you on it. Now it would seem like meeting George Washington in broad daylight on a famous battlefield would be a bad idea for a guy in Connor's business. You know, if he truly is an assassin, but I'm not really sure that he is. Uh, I've been assassinated. <laughs> but I'm not really sure that he is an assassin because he doesn't assassinate that much. There's so many other things that he does. He's, he's a boat captain and he's a forest fighter. You know, he, he's a hunter. He's a gatherer. He, he is a businessman who helps support local businesses that make boxes and barrels and candles and and groceries and he even is a midwife he like goes and delivers a baby i mean this guy does everything except assassinate he herds goats are you gonna give me my assassin's hood back i got it i got it you're incognito now Assassino! Assassino! Oh, the game sets the wrong tone from the start. It's like, you're this guy, Haytham, you're a noble Englishman coming over the sea to the New World on a boat, and the ship's captain, he charges you with going out and finding these mutineers. Like, what's the roots of this mutiny that's hobbling yar? And you're like, I will find that on my own. <laughs> so you're really invested in the story at this point. You're like, oh, I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna do this. <laughs> But then, you get distracted. You get distracted because this guy's like, Hey, wanna play some checkers? But it's not checkers, it's some old ancient version of checkers. But still, it's checkers! And this guy's like, I wanna play checkers! And you'd think, well, okay, this guy wants to play checkers. Maybe I have to win the, the confidence of the salty dogs, win them to my side, so that they'll give me that information that I want. But that has nothing to do with what's in the game. The trading and crafting system is similarly broken in that you don't have to craft anything in the game ever if you don't want to. That means that it has nothing to do with the story, so it's all just distracting you from what you're really doing, which is supposedly saving the United States, the fledgling United States from British rule. Maybe if I was making weapons and stocking supplies for some battlefront that desperately needed them, then I would feel more invested in the outcome. As is, making a horseshoe for nothing? Not so much. I believed in nap time. I was only trying to help you. All your base are belong to nerds.